towarzyszącym festiwalowi Audio Art, 28 edycja festiwalu Audio Art. Wykłady są częścią sesji Audio Art realizowanej przez Studio Muzyki Elektroakustycznej Akademii Muzycznej w Krakowie. Festiwal sam ma głównego organizatora Stowarzyszenia Artystyczne Muzyka Centrum. No i jest to już siódmy dzień. So hello everybody, good morning everybody. We have the last lecture from the series of seven. The seven days of the festival, seven lectures, everything clear because the lecture starts every day of the of the uh, festival activity uh, at 12 o'clock at noon and then concert uh, starts at six o'clock the other activity there are installations which are available all the time so so we have a uh, uh, maya ferlak a great uh, composer from belgium but uh, living and being active in other countries uh, netherlands then haag is one of them but also birmingham the other uh, places you can you can check on the website you can check also inside the the project will be presented today so i have a uh, i'm i'm very happy to have you maya here Thank and you. Uh, the lecture has title a little bit different than the the project will present i think on the end of the of the lecture will uh, remind people that they have a, a unique opportunity to to join the performance uh, today and to be with us as a active performers during two pieces of uh, post paradise there will be three pieces but two of them uh, are open for active participation yes so let's let's explain what's going on with reversing yes yeah. yes um so hello everyone um I'm um, going to share my screen. I made a little PowerPoint presentation. Um, so I'm just going to do that now. Um, so normally you should see my screen now. <clears throat> now, okay. Yes, it works. Yes. Uh -huh. um, okay. So reversing, um, so maybe, um, yeah, reversing as a compositional method to communicate. Um, so I'm, I'm Maya Verlek. Um, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a doctor actually. <laughs> um, I, uh, I finished my PhD in 2018 um, and now I'm teacher in uh, Amsterdam Conservatoire. Um, uh, but um, as Marek also said, I'm, um, I'm a bit everywhere. <laughs> I'm in Birmingham, I'm in The Hague, uh, I'm in Amsterdam, I'm in Belgium. Um, and I'm not only a composer, I'm also a performer and I'm also a curator. Um, you can see my website listed here. Um, so you can also go and see all these things that I do. So, but today I want to talk to you about reversing as, as a method um, in, in my compositional process um, and how reversing could um, be a way to communicate with people, um, how to communicate a particular subject. So, um, for me, it all starts with um, perception. Um, so, perception... Um, uh, can be, for instance, like this score says, uh, find the place, look around, examine the evidence. Now, this is a little text that uh, not that not I wrote, but it was uh, written by Howard Skempton um, after a conversation with me. Um, so he um, he wrote this um, after we had like a quite intense conversation about uh, perception uh, and context. Um, now. I will explain you in the next few slides um, the reasons for him to write this down the way as he did. Um, but keep this in mind. Find a place, look around, examine the evidence. So I want to start explaining this with giving you um, an example from another composer um, who is also uh, an artist and called David Halbich. Um, David Halbich um, lives in Brussels, um, but he's from Germany. 
Um, and he's quite known in Belgium for his book called, uh, photo book called Belgian Solutions. Now, Belgian Solutions is a book for pictures um, which shows weird situations in the streets of Belgium. So, for instance, this uh, traffic uh, sign which is uh, wrong and so they solved it, they gave it the, sol the solution of just putting some, uh, some tape on the sign so that it is correct. Um, or the stairs, the stairs that leads to no nowhere. Um, it's also a very weird uh, thing on the streets that maybe you might be passing by every day, but you don't really notice. Now the book of David Halbig um, shows all these pictures of all these uh, strange situations. And what he basically does with this book is that he teaches us to see these things. Um, and the funny thing is that I, when I talked to him about this, um, he told me that he actually started to receive a lot of emails from people who took their own pictures of things and sent it to him. So all these weird things um, on the streets um, were suddenly seen by everyone, so things that were normally ignored. Um, so, for instance, here, this is also funny, um, it's someone tried to fix his uh, brick wall with, uh, <laughs> his concrete wall with some tape. Um, this is a, another kind of cute thing, it's like there's a little space left, so they filled it in with uh, some other type of, uh, uh, yeah, stones. Now, um, maybe, wait, I got a bit too fast. Um, now, these things, I mean, you would ignore these things usually. Um, so you have to really learn, you have to really learn to see. Um, and this, this is what I want to show with, with these pictures. Like, you have to learn to see these things. You have to learn to be aware of your context, to be aware of your surroundings. Um, and that's exactly what David Halbig does with his pictures. Now, from this perception, we can go to identification. So what, how do we identify these things? Now, there's a really nice uh, book by Dick Reimakers. He's a Dutch composer. Um, he, uh, was, he worked in The Hague. Um, he was also a teacher in the Royal Conservatoire of The Hague. Um, he, um, he passed away quite recently. Um, and he's quite important um, for the composition department, but also for the sonology department in uh, the Conservatoire of The Hague, um, as well for the art science department as well. Um, he did a lot of experimental things, uh, but he also wrote this quite special book called Method, um, where he, it's a bit of a philosophy um, in how artists could think about um, what they do and what they do to uh, the, the, your context you work within. So this is uh, one of the very first, maybe sort of poem that is in this book. Um, and so he says, this and that. There is this and that. This is here and that is there. Here is the world of this. There is the world of that. This and that are separated. Now think of this as an artist, an artist who is here and there is the world is out there. So try to uh, understand it that way. Now this at that, he continues, um, a plan is this at that. An operation is this to that. This plans this to that. For this at that. For this, at that, this leaves its world. It's for this, either here or there, one of both. So again, try to imagine this, uh, that uh, in the kind of mind of an artist, um, what, what is it, what do you do when you have a plan to, um, to, to create something and that you create this within this world, within the world you operate in. And he continues, this touches that. So when you really go and do your thing, you, you touch the outside world. So if this is at that, this touches that. This has had plans to touch. Hence, this wanted 
to be at that. If this touches that, this touches for the second time. The first time in its thoughts, the second time in the world of that. This repeats the touching. A plan is a touching executed in thought before effectively touching. Considered thus, a plan is a thought operation. Now, these are poems that you need to think about, and um, it's, it might be a bit difficult to let this sink in now uh, in my short uh, lecture. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I will continue. This is the last one I want to show. This besides that. If this touches that, this is beside that. This is not just this beside that, but forms a relation with that. By touching, the relation becomes manifest. The manifest relation, this beside that, is a connection. A connection is a cont contraction of this at that, executed according to plan. The visible and tangible result of the contraction this that is a construction. The construction this that is the confirmed plan of this, to touch that. Viewed thus, a plan is a weak construction of the head of this. Right, let's continue. Now, so we have just like talked about how we perceive, how we could perceive things or how we, and how we um, could be aware of, of things in our surrounding. Now, where does reversing now come in? Now reversing comes in when you want to underline, underline the particular subject you have perceived. So imagine you are the artist, you perceive something in your context and you want to say something about that. Now, the way how you could say that is, for instance, by reversing the situation so that your subject becomes more clear. Now, this is a little, uh, this, this news article that you can see is um, a little story to, for you to make clear um, what I want to talk about. Now, this is a very old newspaper uh, from, um, from when I was uh, uh, a small child. Um, and... Um, this anecdote is about, um, uh, I was, I think, 10, 11 years old. Um, and the Minister of Transport in Belgium um, decided to cycle with uh, my whole class um, through the streets of Ghent um, to show that he wanted to have more cycle paths um, in, in Ghent. Um, now, I, as a, as a child, uh, children are quite, uh, I guess, innocent uh, and will say everything <laughs> what they want to say. So I said to this minister when I was 11, I said on the cycle trip, I said to him, but why don't you put the bikes on the side of the road? Um, I, if you can, you can put the, the bikes in the middle of the road where the cars are and the cars you can put on the side of the road. So... I basically gave him a solution for his problem by reversing the situation. You can give the big bit of the road to the bikes and the small bit of road next to the bikes you give to the cars. Um, now, obviously, the minister just laughed at me and uh, this ended up in the, in the newspaper. Um, but this is a, a, an example to show you um, how you can create a solution or you can create attention to a particular problem um, by reversing the situation. Now, um, now we go to music, uh, <laughs> finally. Um, now, this is a piece that I wrote in 2016. It's called A Hard Day's Night. Um, and here, um, the, the kind of compositional process here started with um, the perceiving the, the, the idea of um, the audience members are usually quiet. Um, audience members are usually um, like 
carefully clap in their hands when a concert is over. Um, well, if you compare this to like a really big pop pop music concerts, such as, I don't know, the Beatles, where I took this title from, A Hard Day's Night, um, there's lots of screaming going on. There's a lot of uh, audience screaming and you almost don't hear the music. You hear the screaming above uh, the, the music. So I thought, well, what if I reverse the situation and um, the screaming becomes the music? Um, so I created a little software where um, uh, it, it would analyze the scream of the audience. So I had to make them scream first. So I made a big sign um, that uh, says woo. Um, so I asked the audience to scream. And then from the moment they screamed, my computer live analyzed um, their sound in a chord. And that chord was then played by the second performer on electric guitar. Um, I will play a bit for you. Pitch analysis, F chord. Pitch analysis, C chord. Pitch analysis, C chord. So this is a very small example of that. So here um, I, I underlined the subject um, by really reversing that situation, the usual, the conventional concert situation. Now this is another example, which is called All English Music is Green Sleeves. This was also written around the same time, um, around 2016. Um, here I, um, uh, reflected on the score. So what is a, a musical score? Um, now, um, normally a musician plays what is on the score um, and, and that's that, um, the score is fixed. Now, I wondered what if the score um, also becomes a performer in, in some extent? Um, so the score can actually uh, perform together with the performer. Um, so I created a feedback system between the score and the performer so that they both interact with each other. The way how I did this is that I simply put um, a, a speaker underneath the, the score. So the score is um, a piece of paper or uh, here it is a, a canvas, like a painting canvas. Um, and the notes are um, very light pieces of foam, um, like sponges. So the sponges just lie there on the on the staff lines, and um, when the performer plays this, um, the the sound of the performer goes through the speakers underneath the score, meaning that the notes will move every single time the performer plays the notes. This, uh, um, the, the so what happens then is that. Uh, the notes move. So here, so this was so this was the first situation, um, and then the performer played it, and then the notes have moved. So because of its his own doing, um, and then it keeps on moving and so on, until all the notes move of the paper. Um, so the the performance finishes with all the notes of the paper, or if they find a state of equilibrium, so where they just stay in one place. Um, so I have a little performance, oops, I have a little performance of this. Um, this is, by the way, Howard Skempton, uh, so the person who wrote the score, the first score I showed. Um, he, um, he wanted to perform this for me. Um, <clears throat> Thank you. 
Okay, I'll stop here. Um, so um, here's again his score. Um, now, yeah, this is, by the way, this performance is just very, very difficult uh, so, because you're constantly playing notes that are moving. Um, so, so you have to find your own tricks as a performer to um, um, deal with this reversed, reversed situation in that sense. Now, context becomes very important. So um, the score, find the place, look around, examine the evidence um, is, is important um, in relation to the context you work within. Now, now what happens is that um, to reverse the situation, you also need to take enough distance so that, first of all, that you perceive particular things, like the pictures I showed you in the very beginning of David Halbig. Um, you need to take some distance um, to be aware of your surroundings. Um, so there is this awareness. Um, and you you need to be able to analyze your context. So distancing is important. So it's a position whereby nothing is taken for granted. So nothing, nothing should be normal. Um, nothing is taken for granted. So analyzing the context and asking questions. So it's very important to analyze, but also to constantly ask questions, um, also about your own practice. Now, for instance, the opposite would be making work with an insular attitude, resulting in ideas that are only meaningful to the maker and without questioning the creative process and its connection to the given context. So that's the opposite. So that's not what I, uh, what I would do to, in reversing uh, the situation. So what happens is that um, uh, I will be developing a new approach for each new situation because everything is very uh, uh, about the context I work within. So I reanalyze every new context and adapt methods to each new situation. Um, now, this might sound a bit crazy as as composer you also just want to you you cons constantly doing this analyzing this constantly analyzing your new, new context changing your methods um, uh, but this is what i do um, within this practice of um, trying to reverse the situation to really underline what the subject um, is that i want to bring forward um, and the most important within this is that nothing is taken for granted. That's the one thing that uh, you should uh, uh, keep in mind. Now, um, this is a quite old piece from 2012, um, created uh, together with uh, Andy Ingemels, who you can see here. Um, the performance that you see here is um, very recent. This is from last year. Um, now, what happens in Tapis, Tapis is um, uh, started from analyzing uh, the fact that um, in, in the Synology department and uh, the Royal Conservatory of The Hague, um, all, all composers um, call their pieces tape pieces. Now, tape piece, you would think, okay, it's fixed media, it's audio on a computer, um, but it's on a computer now, and it's not anymore on what you can see here in the picture on this big tape machine. Still, people call their pieces, their tape pieces, tape pieces, um, which is quite funny to me. So this is an example again of how you can take distance and realize these things that actually are right in front of you um, and are actually quite funny. Um, so uh, Andy, uh, Andy Ingemels and I uh, decided to um, give a little comment, but in a in a with, as as in a joke. So we didn't. Uh, it's not like a criticism or something. Uh, it's more as a joke within this. So what we did is that we um, used um, different kind of sticky tape, um, and we wrap ourselves with the sticky tape, um, and so the sound that that produces creates the actual tape piece. So the sound of us wrapping ourselves in tape and then trying to get loose. Now, um, to, to really round, round off this concept, we then also recorded it on tape. So you can see the tape machine here. We recorded our performance on actual uh, reel-to-reel tape. 
Um, so then we have a real tape piece um, using sticky tape and record it on reel-to-reel -reel tape. I'll show you. Um, so this, this performance consists of uh, many different movements, like because we use different kind of tape. Um, and um, so it always sounds differently and also lasts a um, uh, different length as well. New. So we reverse the situation here again. So um, now just uh, I want you to also now think of yourself um, in a situation, um, but then also remove yourself from the situation and allow imagination. Um, now you can do this also after this lecture. Um, uh, try this. Try this uh, at, at at home. Uh, as in uh, to um, uh, yeah, as a try. Think of yourself in a situation. Remove yourself from the situation and allow imagination. Now, what happens is that um, if you allow imagination, you can end up with uh, a witchcraft electronics. Um, uh, this is um, um, a piece that I um, made, which is actually an impossible piece. Um, however, I made it possible. Um, but um, if I would try to do it for real, it is impossible. Um, now, this was made with uh, the Dirty Electronics uh, group um, from John Richards. You might know him, maybe. Um, and um, this this was in a radio station, um, and um, we we created a piece there. Um, so my my. I, I started to question what, what a radio is and uh, what, what does a radio exactly. Um, so I thought, okay, um, when you when a voice speaks, a voice a voice speaks on different frequencies. Um, now a radio a radio sends signal on carrier frequencies, um, and I thought, well, what if um, the voice um, the frequencies in the voice become carrier frequencies? Um, this is obviously very like impossible. Uh, first of all, the frequencies, carrier frequencies are a very, very high uh, frequencies. So it's a uh, voice would not reach those. Um, so I would need to transpose all these uh, voice frequencies. Um, uh, plus a voice is so rapidly changing um, frequencies that uh, you would also never really uh, tune, be able to tune into this carrier frequency on the radio. Now, the way how I made this possible is that um, so I made again a software um, where the voice is speaking. So this is not a score, by the way, this, this thing that you see here is not a score. It's uh, a, a representation of what happens in my software. 
So uh, you can see on the top line, you see the voice and you see all these random pitches going up and down in the voice. Um, now what my software does is it, pick, it picks one note in there and it makes that into a carrier frequency. So on that point, um, that, that pitch is, the, is where the voice will be found. So if you want to hear the voice, you need to find that carrier frequency. Now, there, then there are three tone generators, and these three tone generators are searching for where, where, what is the carrier frequency. Um, when they find the correct carrier frequency, such as here, then you can hear the voice. Um, and otherwise, you don't hear the voice at all. So the voice is, is constantly going in all these carrier frequencies, and only when the two, the three tone generators um, uh, find the voice, you can hear the voice. Um, we can listen to this as well. example of this piece. Um, I'm also, um, by the way, brushing the studio floor. That's the noise you hear. Um, and the frequencies of the brush are in direct relationship um, to, uh, to the dynamics. I can't remember how that worked. Sorry. <laughs> but um, yes, so this also, I'm also brushing the studio floor. Now, um, now we end up at communication. So what happens is like um, we're reversing the, all these situations and we're pointing to things um, now, but um, we're, we're trying to communicate something by reversing. So um, we are, I have to ask the question, what does the composition material communicate? And what does the performer or performance context communicate? Or in, in another view, what would you like to communicate and how to create focus, concentration and awareness? So how can the compositional material support the intention? And how can the no notation then support the concept? So you have to be creative with the, all of this, obviously. So creative ways to communicate the compositional process and the intention with the performance and the audience. So how do we do this? Um, how do we just do this communication? Um, well, there's different ways. Um, and also like how you, how you communicate, what, what exactly do you want to communicate is then the question. Um, now, this is an example of Hide and Seek is, uh, was written for uh, an ensemble called Ensemble Interface. This is from last year, 2019. Now, if you think about, um, I mean, the name Ensemble Interface already triggered my imagination. Um, now, an interface, I think we maybe, most of us probably will know what an interface does, um, like a sound interface, but it makes communication between two different mediums possible. Um, so you could think, if you think of this in a broader sense, um, a, a mediums can also be ensembles and audience, for instance. So the communication between ensemble and audience, or the communication between the computer and ensemble, the computer and the audience, um, the ensemble and the audience, and so on. So you have all these relationships that could happen um, within the communication, and what could go wrong within that communication. So. Um, so what happens in this piece is that the musicians um, hide 
uh, musical material and try to redraw the musical material. Um, and what happens within this is that the properties um, of the medium and the way how they hide this, hide this change or develop the material. So um, what happens um, is that uh, there, so there's a particular material that the, the ensemble plays, um, but all that material is being recorded and, and put in a computer. So, but everything is being analyzed. The pitches they play, the rhythms they play, the dynamics they play, uh, the orchestration of it as well. Now, um, the computer makes mistakes, just as also people make mistakes. Um, so there's all these mistakes that also is recorded within the computer. Now, in the second part of the piece, the, the performer's role is to um, uh, try to play exactly what they played before um, um, but they have to redraw that out of the computer so the computer will only react to them if they play something exactly the same way as they did in the first part um, so so you have this constant communication between the computer and the ensemble and the computer reacting to them when they have something correct or not um, it's a bit difficult um, to hear all of this when you listen to it, but we can we can try to listen a little bit to it. So you could hear a little bit of the computer reaction at the end, um, but you have to listen a lot longer to hear all the output coming out. Now, um, I, um, I'm not only um, communicating with performers about uh, the things I have perceived in my context, but I'm also communicating with an audience, obviously. So reversing to communicate with an audience. Um, so the audience, you could ask the audience to participate, for instance, in the process so that they also understand um, what is going on really with the material, with the musical material or with uh, the subject of the piece. Um, such as uh, when I ask them to scream, um, they're very aware of what they're doing. Um, so this could be in a passive way. So their attention is triggered and they're trying to unfold the puzzle so several interpretations are possible so this is what you would see more in this last piece in this ensemble piece um the what they hear is really a puzzle to them they have not 
they're not quite sure what is going on, really what the musicians are doing. They hear relationships between the material that musicians have played and are playing then later again and what the computer is doing. So they hear all these relationships, but they're not they're not completely sure what is happening. So it's a puzzle for them to unfold. Um, now, but then in a more active way is again what I uh, what I showed with the screaming piece in A Hard Day's Night is that uh, they have to do something to make the performance happen. So the audience is in control of the performance process. Um, so I've I've done I do both kind of ways of uh, creating pieces um, sort of where the audience is passive or where the audience is active and so in both cases you communicate but you communicate in a different way um, and so that's um, we come to the end so that is um, the piece for this evening um, and the piece for this evening uh, is called popularity um, and is one of three pieces that will be presented um, at the concerts, the post paradise concert. Um, so popularity is uh, created actually with um, uh, 36 audience members. Um, and so um, you will, the audience, the audience on Zoom, you will need to do particular things um, to um, um, with with this other audience so there's two kind of audiences um so um there's these 36 and there is you um so it, it is a, a little game between uh two two different audiences but again here you can see i've i've reversed the situation um there's not there's not like the normal conventional performer as in the audience has become performers um there aren't we can all be audience and we can all be performers. Um, there's no separation within this. Um, and um, But then again, you are free uh, to also uh, think what you want to think about. What am I trying to communicate with this piece? Um, um, <clears throat> and this uh, is then the end of my presentation. Now, um, this was a lot of material. Um, <laughs> So I, I guess there might be questions. I'm just going to stop sharing so you see me. Um, there you go. Okay, let's check it out. On Zoom, we are not so many of us. Sarah, Simon, uh, Mail, Piechota, I don't know their first name. And Anastasia. Anastasia was uh, joining the other lectures too. Also putting some questions on the chat. The chat is also the, the, the way you can you can make more specified uh, questions and let's wait for the for the students ha 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 <laughs> no questions everything is clear <laughs> for me it's a beautiful reference to cage of course to to several actions and that's 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 but uh, well there's a big frame of course and um, with many other references, but it's, it's great to, to keep it uh, as it is the, 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 the special uh, connection between media art, site specific uh, actions, uh, and, uh, and uh, also a new form of. I don't know whether this is correct because, you know, when I was growing, we we're using the term conceptual music and uh, conceptual art. So, uh, one of my PhD students is a great composer, Polish composer Piotr Peszat, uh, running uh, a great ensemble. They played the concert last uh, Saturday, and uh, he relates uh, uh, most of his actions to conscious music, to to um, Harry Lehman uh, philosophy. So the, there are a lot of uh, links, and I think that even on the on the very basic level, the the, the to, to to talk about content and context i think the, those two elements which are extremely <laughs> important and to mm -hmm. to make them really visible in form of even the very direct and pure example is is the point is a message because in many cases we are we are covered by certain model of 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 reference we are yeah. inside certain context and to we are 
in many cases we are just unable to 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 skip or to <laughs> to be out of the of the concert to to skip the concert or to really cut off the the concept to to make a new meaning and another reference which i try sometimes to explain in a very simple way to cut all the references before we start watching and listening so whenever we are coming to the to the next we call it new well the next performance the the best is to be free to be clean <laughs> and to, to to get the direct contact with the with this piece of art or the, the the group of people or to get this very basic communication because in many cases we are we are re we are already coming with the with the, this kind of garbage you know this kind of uh, uh, reference this the all backgrounds we we are yeah. Yeah. in and i think that that's that's very much in common with with what you are talking maya and so, yeah. I'm 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 so happy that some of my students are here and and they will be they will be available later on because that the that's a that's a consensus now and status not about lecture because lecture were always the 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 the, the reference for for textbook for certain publication we are referring to things from the past but you know i've got them the message on the beginning of of, of your lecture now you write the name of this belgian writer uh, so then i i i sent uh, i i wrote it but then i remind that in fact our stream can be moved back you know even that you are listening you but in the same time like on the netflix or you know apple tv all mm -hmm. those uh, uh, TV uh, boxes, you can you can manipulate over time. You know, <laughs> you know that's, a, that's a very nice moment that you, we are following live, but also live manipulation. It's possible. It's available. Yeah, we yeah. can go backwards. So the the challenge is to go forward. <laughs> you are in this moment. You try to imagine how to make a manipulation of a future, which which doesn't exist yet. So I think this is also a, a quite a quite amazing deal and challenge. I'm I'm trying to do it <laughs> in one project. I I promise to do it. But well, it's also relative because um, when you are ready to do it, you know you you are part of this multi-layer temporal <laughs> structure and that's that's really great but of course with the concerts now you we know that there's a limited audience during the show online and then the audience is growing after that <laughs> and we count well, likes and all those uh, uh, remarks you know so that, yeah, that yeah. it's quite quite uh, uh, typical now for the for the current uh, pandemic uh, situation that's also quite special now and uh, like you can't imagine in a, a real performance people are uh, saying i like this i like this <laughs> well now you can do it in the middle of the performance <laughs> well this is the screaming and the applauding uh, <laughs> idea you know and uh, <laughs> It's really great to to make a use of this, of course, as a as a control, as a as a control data, okay, and to really to really manipulate consciously or unconsciously to the audience. <laughs> That's, it's another story, whether this is a pure uh, open or it's it's in fact like a, all communicators, you know, that are doing this uh, all a long time without our permission without our conscious so that's that's another story either you are telling well i had nothing to hide so do it <laughs> i'm ready <laughs> or you are struggling and you just try to complain and 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 to start the strong uh, processes and lawsuits and whatever oh which is amazing story just a strike and just uh, like in in our country now a yeah. revolution a war a fight no 
you have to go out. You know, that, that's, a, that's a beautiful message because it comes from the young people, from, from, uh, from teenagers. Yeah. So, mm, yeah. no more space now. <laughs> So that's a sorry, but but coming back to the to the to your uh, examples, I think that that's that's really beautiful um, uh, vision between scores, uh, uh, a design of new uh, instrument, which is uh, also immanent part of the space because the the space matter very much. Uh, so that this. Yeah, yeah. Between, Things which are space oriented or that independent to this space, it's it's also another issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, I was really happy with uh, Howard Howard Scampton his little score, obviously, when he told me, find the place, look around, examine the evidence. As in, um, because I was um, he was my supervisor during my uh, PhD, uh, during during my doctorate. Um, and so I could, um, obviously the way how I work, it's, it feels most of the time very chaotic <laughs> as in that I'm always reinventing the methods. I'm always looking at the context. I'm always, um, looking, okay, what can I do with this and how can I now deal with this? So I wouldn't, I would never try to repeat something that I've done before as in like, to make it easy for myself. So I, I keep learning, I keep doing new things. I, I, I want to keep learning uh, new things and how to do new things and um, investigate the context I, I was given. Um, now, um, but at some point during my doctorate, um, this became all quite cha chaotic. This, this, this became a chaotic of material, chaotic of, of stuff. So in a PhD, you need to focus. In a PhD, you need to... Um, is say like what are you what are you doing what are you researching what is your research question what is your result what is uh, your process um, and then after two years of conversations with Howard then Howard suddenly came one day with this piece of paper and he says look uh -huh. what this is what you do find the place look around examine the evidence this is what you are doing this is like the the thing um and i was so happy that then there was finally someone who was like then analyzed instead of me then having to analyze myself what i was doing there was someone else who then analyzed okay this is what it is um it's not chaos it's not at all chaos it's yeah. actually there is a system to what you do uh -huh. Uh -huh. um and that is what it is is that you Perception is important. Perception is important. This analysis is important. Um, and, um, and the way, I mean, and the Im imagination is important so that you allow, allow the freedom of imagination um, to, um, to create things. Mm -hmm. I, I have a small problem. Yes. Because I have one document in mind and I'm not sure whether this is the right moment to show it during your lecture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can try. So I found long, long ago, during the visit of Cage in, in Poland, mm -hmm. my, my boss, Professor Patkowski, founder of Experimental Studio uh, in Polish radio in Warsaw in 57, but also the director of Warsaw Autumn Festival, Polish Composers Union, blah, blah, blah. I was his assistant, but he loved Cage. They they know each other very well. I met him only once in '87. That was also a quite nice story because uh, he asked me where I'm from, and I, I said that I'm from Poland, Kraków. Uh, and then uh, he said, "Well, I think my grandma was Poland, well from Poland." <laughs> and he was laughing, you know, and, <laughs> and asking me, "Do you think it it, it works?" Or <laughs> <laughs> so that was like a, like a beautiful <laughs> joke, you know, in, in immediately, you know, in the, in the very moment when he, he got the message. But in fact, he was visiting Warsaw Autumn in the 60s already. So he, he had the special connection. And we have also the, uh, the program for, for French TV in 89, Sound in Silence, the, the series of, of uh, and my society my friends from the society were just performers of the of this um, and including Drake, John Cage uh, personally also with this 80, 89 but the document is 
Wait a minute, I will show it and we'll see what would be the reaction. <laughs> okay. There's no sound, so I'm sharing this. I would like to check whether if I will go to the full screen whether you see this. Do you see this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I notice. Yeah. <laughs> do you know this? Do you know yeah, this? Yeah. Paper? Okay, okay. Yes, yes, I do. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they are quite close to the to the concept of uh, of uh, Howard. Yeah, I think th this is which is a very sh special uh, conclusion from from those rules uh, of cage. In fact, because it's like like uh, much more essential than the cage because he was just relating this to the students of the of the Cunningham uh, dance uh, uh, group Merce yeah. Cunningham studio and 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 those this is one of the document I'm, I'm showing to my students in certain moment explaining also uh, nothing is a mistake this is a very my, uh, important uh, message yeah 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 yeah, I actually also wanted to show it to my students at some point, but I didn't find a good moment yet. <laughs> <laughs> always be around. Yeah. The, the the hints on the on the bottom. Come or go to everything. Always go to classes. This is a beautiful story. Always go to classes. That's I I should start from uh, every every year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's very important. Look, look uh, at movies carefully and <laughs> and often. <laughs> and the, 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 this last one, save everything. So collect everything. <laughs> it may come in handy later. <laughs> so that's yeah. So so beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm showing because uh, I think for me it's it's really important document. It's quite old, but. Uh, but still valid um, in most cases, you know, and and um, of course we we can. Uh, sometimes it's good to show it without the the author, you know, without telling who who wrote it, because this is also part of of um, of the idea which I I mentioned that to be out of the of too much information, then mm -hmm. to concentrate on the message. Exactly. On a, on a music you are listening to, you don't need to know who is the author. You don't need <laughs> even to, to the title. My, no, no. my old friend, Yuka Piensu, composer and, uh, and ha a harpsichord player from Helsinki, from Finland, during his concert, he, he's, he was always sharing the program after his concert. So he played the full concert without... Uh, uh, without well, my friend Piotr Peshat is on the line, so I'm I'm a composer. Hello, Piotr. We, <laughs> we are on we are online now, so that that's really great because the the, the lecture goes on and uh, we are talking with Maya Ferlak and the other people which share the the lecture on Zoom. So you are also part of this. <laughs> So I will call you later, or you can join us through Zoom because this is the the, the easy way. We are we are still there. Surprise a little bit, yes. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> let's let's do it like this, Piotr. Or I will call you later. Okay. Okay. See you. He was surprised, so he didn't get the message. I, I just sent him a reminder about about your lecture. So, but but they are busy. They are playing a lot of concerts, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's uh, also the, the, the also the point. Oh, maybe that's good that he called me because I lost the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> to be clean, you know, as much as possible. It's it's also the, the very special challenge. You can't get rid of your background, so you can't get rid of, uh, of your knowledge, of your experience, but as you are staying in a certain moment and a certain place, I think it's, it's a beautiful story, if you can do it, if you yeah. can be free of, of those things as yeah. much as possible. I know that it's, it's very hard to accept it <laughs> by many people, but, but I'm, yeah, that's the point. That's why I, I stopped uh, printing a booklets programs, you know, just a simple flyer 
with basic information and that's it. And then when you want to, to know, of course, you can click and you can open. Uh, and it, it, it happens for several years, not because of the pandemic, but, but in general, because of the, of the communication form. I think this is extremely important. On one side, you have the, the access to all, uh, you know, references, but bibliography, but, but in the same time, during the, the, the real uh, action, the real art activity of, in front of different things, not only concerts. We should be able to clean up the, the space, to be concentrated on, on that what we are experiencing, what we are receiving. Yeah, yeah. Without context as much as possible. Then, then trying to describe as it was in a pure way, without classification, without labels, without... Uh, things to, to find out what it is, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of media art, you know, connect with some elements of, of sound objects or whatever, you know, and then, because sometimes it's, we are also limited with, with those terms and, and um, mm -hmm. we are moving the description to certain classes and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, that's the difficult thing, like, I'm not sure which sort of class I would fit right now but yeah. um that's what I'm talking yeah 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 but that's how it is I guess <laughs> um I guess I, I need to like kind of separate all my work in different categories um if I want to do that <clears throat> um but um yeah I mean and also I mean the idea of like how do you justify the things that you do within different mediums um, it's also like a, a big conversation, um, which is like a different, a whole different lecture, which I could also have given. But um, <laughs> um, I actually, I have one, I have one piece where I, um, I, I kind of joke about justification. So how we as composer need to justify our the way how we work or the way how we do things, um, and that only if we can justify it, then it's also valid. Um, and it's also valid as a as a piece of music. Um, so at some point, I I then decided to give the justification um, instead of the music. Um, so I, I um, um, this was a, an ensemble piece, um, and I I basically analyzed a piece and I gave the analysis of the piece. So they had all these kind of instructions about um, how the pieces. Um, uh, like like an, 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 a musical analytical material, um, but they didn't have one note. They just had nothing of. of um, but so I made a game with the analysis, so that if they played a the game with the analysis, they could somehow make a ghost version of the actual piece that I had. Um, but it it was a bit of a criticism, um, as in about justification. It's like us justifying our work and, um, and also what I'm doing now, like I'm talking about my work. I'm also justifying my work while I'm talking about my work. Um, so I'm, um, I mean, it's a bit of a, I, I guess like, uh, I'm so much uh, uh, analyzing and reflecting all the time. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, for some people, this can also be really scary to do, um, which is another, <laughs> another situation. <laughs> Um, no, but that's, that's extremely important. You know, I have, in fact, I have uh, some some uh, some example now that I have uh, foreign students which expect something different than my Polish students, for example. And um, I see that the, the, they were coming with certain expectations from from another school, and they, uh, for me, they are not open enough to change their mind in, in this in this very aspect so they they're coming with the with a structure you know with a structure which they are part of this mm -hmm. and that's that's also quite quite uh, quite typical that uh, the people are either carrying their own you know uh, cage their own box they are inside a life box or academic box like a like a structure and and that's i think is, is a big challenge to 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 change it, we can call it, but it's it's too much metaphoric. A new academy, you know, just to 
to think about this kind of open building, the open um, uh, system, which it's all the time open and ready to evaluate, to to invite the biggest, you know, to, to make it as a biggest priority ever. So I, I believe that this is the, the right construction. But practically, it's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite interesting because we we made the exchange with um, Art Space um, uh, Interfaculty uh, several years ago with Robert Pravda, the, the three guys from from uh, Studio of, of Sonology in mm -hmm. Royal Conservatory in Den Haag, and the the, the program is in between the, uh, Royal Conservatory and Art Academy in, in yeah, Den Haag. Yeah. So so with my because I have two schools, so the, my second one is Intermedia uh, Department at the Fine Arts Academy and we, we moved on exchange between, between, so they were visiting like 20 students who were visiting Kraków, running for two weeks, running different individual projects and then we mix together, make a big, big performance, big show, kind of exhibits also, and then we visited them next, next year. And I work with them, uh, with Robert, with Horst Rickels, um, uh, the, the um, Victor Venting. That was mm -hmm. in fact the beginning of the if 80s when we when I opened the audio art series before the festival. So yeah. they were also visiting uh, us uh, several times. So they are really they are really great uh, line mm -hmm. uh, lines between between uh, uh, those uh, spaces. And yeah. yeah. And do you know do you know John Richards? Do you know the Dirty Electronics group? No, you know me as a as a as a coordinator of International Confederation for Electroacoustic Music. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm uh, in contact with uh, with Adam Stanovich and James Andean. Oh, ah, yeah, James. Yeah. Bean, so British uh, uh, Electroacoustic Network. Yeah, yeah. Well, James James is a colleague of John Richards, um, okay. and he has an ensemble called Dirty Electronics, um, and um, they do they all members, lots of... Yeah, they are members of Bean, Yeah, so they, they, because they opened this British uh, federation, which we which we need very much in the structure of, of uh, CIME, IME, ISEM, you know, to... to yes. So there are like 24 universities in the UK, uh, interconnected. I, ho I, I we're working also with uh, with Birmingham Conservatoire. Yeah. Not Bean, but uh, not Bees, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. with uh, Lamberto Ciccioli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, another I know group, him. Uh, so running the Integra project. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Base environment. Also, yeah. I always show the students that they have another free, quite complex uh, system available. Yeah, yeah, they were with me in the PhD also, so okay. I, I know them. <laughs> Voila! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. the, the world is, is, is small. It's very very small. <laughs> we are talking about the, this kind of uh, environment. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. So, uh, Maya, uh, we we have this announcement for four o'clock because I think that would be the, the the most safe idea to to practice to check it out, and then we have even this two hours before the concert also to to make last check. That was also my decision uh, earlier that Pneuma is after because Pneuma doesn't need too much. Uh, they are streaming from their own. You know, they are using our channel. Okay. So they are playing live the concert, but we are just uh, uh, sending the, the address to, to our channel, and, and, and that's it. But with, with your two pieces, we need um, uh, some, some check. Yeah. We already made it now with, with Zoom, because we, we will be using... Well, are, are, we, are we using the same Zoom? Okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I also tested it with Zoom before, so it's, it's safe. Okay, now the same stage so uh, looking for the for the chat uh, uh, our students are still with us Konrad Anastasia Krzysztof Piechota 
So I'm I'm very sorry that we made the, the, the direct conversation with Maya during the lecture, but in fact, uh, that's uh, there are many I think quite interesting topics in inside the lecture, and I I'm so happy to 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 get this uh, and the, uh, the the excellent examples of of the. Of, uh, of really different um, uh, models, so that's that's also quite quite great to, to get it. I I even send them uh, the the message that I can send them your lecture in PDF. Yeah, I can. Uh... You, if you can do it if you have this active links inside the inside the presentation. I think that's what I'm doing in in my case. Is that, that the video is like a frame, like a still photo. But then uh, the link is active, so so in PDF you, you, we can do it. So that's the easiest way, and and small file. So we we, we can we can uh, I will publish uh, later on the on the website we if you agree, the, Maya. Can we get the PDF soon? Yeah, I can do it now. Okay, let's do it. So we wait. <laughs> no, I mean I will. I can close and then do it. Otherwise, <laughs> okay. you distract me. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you shouldn't send everything, you know. <laughs> you should select. <laughs> okay. Okay. I have some question. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a situation uh, when you start to compose something, you have the main idea of it, but then you kind of lose it. You lose, uh, like, inspiration. You lose. You lose this uh, main theme of uh, your. And peace. And what do you usually do with this? Losing um, my inspiration. <laughs> losing the. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I just continue analyzing. So if I realize there is, I'm, I'm not quite sure about the inspiration I have. Then I, I keep analyzing my, my context or what is given to me. So if I, if I get stuck. I mean, that's, I guess, what you're asking. Um, if I get stuck with, in, within the compositional process, I just um, try to really uh, take so much distance so that I really remove myself from, from everything as much as possible, that I, um, I can see even more things within the, the context that I'm analyzing. Um, now, um, if I get stuck, then later again, um, then there something went wrong then then i think something in my compositional process went wrong and somewhere i made a wrong decision because in a way you can never really get stuck the way how i work um because the solution to all the problems is within the piece so and that's also what marek said in the beginning of the bad um, uh, conceptual work um i don't i don't use often the word the definition of conceptual working um because i think um uh i can be a bit more specific in a sense but uh, yes there is a history in conceptual art um there is a connection to it for sure um as in that um all the solutions i believe that all the solutions to the problems are uh in in the context are there or in the the subject that i'm bringing forward so if i'm if i get stuck then i just keep analyzing um or I, I need to tell myself that I made a mistake in the process so that I need to basically delete everything that I've already done and then go back to the very beginning, to the very beginning at the moment that I had an idea and then see what went wrong. Where, where, did, I, where did I make a decision that didn't quite fit um, in the compositional process? Um, and I mean, that happens. And then sometimes I need to delete uh, material that I was working on for a whole month. Um, and I mean, that's, that's that. But then at least I'm not stuck anymore. Then I know what the mistake was and I know how to continue again. I have a, I have a private question. If you can uh, uh, switch on the cameras. Uh, this is the, I, I sometimes remind to my students because in fact, I, I, I'm, I'm in trouble when I'm the only visible person, you know, especially during the, the, the meeting of the small group of people. Okay, great. Conrad is with us. Because, you know, the, 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 there's a matter of communication in general. I think that this is, uh, if there's a large group 
then it will be what we expect, I think, during, during your piece. But that's another story. When we are uh, running the, 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 when we are communicating, especially in our times now, in the pandemic times, I think this is, this is really nice to, to see each other, to, to look. Because I look to your eyes, Maya, for example. Now I look to your eyes, you know, and this is, this is I know that this is an equivalent, but it's, it's like a, like a post, post, post times. It's quite, uh, quite natural in, in a way, yes, that we are looking through the screen to, to each other. <laughs> Okay, oh, Nastia, great, great, great. And Pani Krzysztofie, bardzo, bardzo się cieszę. Thank you very much. Because now we are, we are together. That's, that's my feeling immediately. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> so, yes. Nastia, are you, are you, are you satisfied with the, with the answer of, of Yes, I'm... thank you very much. That was really interesting. Because uh, actually a few years ago, I was trying to compose some pieces for violin and I just left at it, it because I couldn't find the inspiration to continue. So that was very interesting answer. Uh -huh. So that's great. That, that, that's really, that's really important point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, I'm also like a composition teacher, so I, I teach the composition department in Amsterdam Conservatoire, and also there, when a student is stuck with a piece, then also I, I try to return the student back to the first inspiration, and I'm like, okay, but you started like this, and now you're doing that that there's something that went wrong <laughs> in between. Um, so where is your, your first inspiration where it's, it's your, that's why you're stuck now. That's why um, something went wrong and you need to return to your initial, initial idea. Mm -hmm. Conrad. <laughs> Conrad is also a great artist. We are we are a team during the festival for for many years. We are running this this festival, and he is also part of many many other projects. So for us, it's just the last day of the festival. <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry to say that I had a problem with connection in Gatsky, uh, where my parents live. So during the lecture, I was. I moved to my house and that's why I'm asking about PDF and also I'm going to watch the lecture from the beginning soon just to be prepared for 4 p.m. Uh, for, for the rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime I tried to advertise it at as many pages as is possible to hopefully bring some people to, to get connected with us. But yeah, unfortunately, I have no questions. I have to <laughs> see the whole lecture from the beginning. But I'm, I'm very curious about post paradise, uh, the condition. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't talk very much about post paradise. Actually, I mean, I, I still can. Um, I mean, post paradise is, um, post, post paradise basically was, um, well, is a, a concert series that I started um, in 2016. Um, and I, I started this during my PhD um, in, in England um, because um, I felt like there was no platform for more experimental work. Um, so I was missing a platform for people to really um, show show more work and be experimental and, um, and be comfortable, especially be comfortable in the environment to present work. Um, but also that they could communicate with other people who maybe are like-minded. Um, so I started with two friends, with Zach Dawson and Richard Stanton. We started a concert series in um, in the Polish Expat Center uh, in Birmingham. <laughs> uh -huh. um, they were very, very nice people and they had this gallery. They have this gallery called Centrala. Uh -huh. um, and... Um, and they were the only space in all of Birmingham who were giving the space for free. Um, and so they're very, very nice people. And uh, we stayed there for three years. Um, in the second year, we um, received funding from the Arts Council. So then we were also paying for the space. Um, so we were also helping then uh, the gallery there in Centrale. Um, but so this, this concert series, um, started to um, be really be focused on 
um, of three composers for each evening. So it was important that there wasn't too many people so that you, the audience can really focus on the work um, and really also talk to the composer. Um, and if they're performers, also talk to the performers. So that there's really a sense of communication and really sense of, um, yeah, being, um, uh, yeah, that, that you can also be experimental and that you, it's also okay and that you feel comfortable within the, the environment. Um, now, since since I finished uh, the PhD, I, uh, we, we kept on going, um, but then there was no money from England anymore. Uh, the Arts Council in England did not give us any money anymore. Um, I don't know why, because we did a lot of very interesting concerts. Um, and... Um, then um, um, I used to study in The Hague, so um, I was then, I'm still in contact with The Hague. Um, and then I became part of III, so the Instrument Inventors Initiative in The Hague. Um, and then Post Paradise became part of the Instrument Inventors Initiative. Um, and so uh, now there's um, uh, yeah, a good partnership between Post Paradise and III. Um, yeah, so now I'm basically touring Post Paradise. Uh, uh, so occasionally there's a concert in England, occasionally there's a concert in the Netherlands, and now also in Krakow. <laughs> which so, is so where are you in now? Are you in Amsterdam now? <laughs> I'm now in Ghent in Belgium. Um, Ghent. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I actually yeah. live, so I I live again now. <clears throat> I was I was not. Um, I was living in the Netherlands, I was living in England, but now I'm living again in Ghent in Belgium. Um, but I travel to Amsterdam to teach every week. Um, and um, and I also travel to England if there is no corona, then I also go to England often um, to do concerts and to collaborate with other people. So what about current status of, um, of Logos? I'm getting the, a lot of information from, from Moniek. Yeah, uh, and you know Gottfried uh, was in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he escaped from the real danger. He lost yeah. his voice, but now he's back. The voice is back. back. Yeah, the voice get back. His voice yeah. is back. Yeah. He's <laughs> sending the, the some movies, some presentations of the instruments, in installations. So that's yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's quite, quite, quite okay. Yeah, I I know that this is the only way uh, now with those. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm actually. I'm organizing a, a project with them also uh, for um, for the students also in Amsterdam and also with III. Um, so uh, we're going to invite Logos also to um, to bring the robots to the Netherlands, okay. um, and then students can write for it. And um, oh, that's that's amazing. That's really great because that that is all the time my. It's stuck in my mind, you know, what to do, you know, with these big stories when the, when the owners and the main performers I became in older, 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 they have no kids, you know, they have no uh, really um, the family, they, they need the group of people which will be involved in the, in the yeah. heritage of the... Yeah, of but the, their, their family is, uh, is all the people that work there, obviously, know, like, like Christoph, Christoph Laurens, uh, mm -hmm. And uh, like really good people who do a lot of work for Logos. Um, so, um, yeah. but, you know, uh, the, the, to the others, uh, the, the name of the street is Congo Strat, which is also beautiful when I, when I, when I appeared there in the 80s, first time, you know, in Congo Strat, it's Logos duo with this pyramid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Concert hall and, and amazing, amazing place really amazing couple they they've been performing several times in on audio art festival that's how i in fact how i met audio art in arts electronica in linz in 88 mm -hmm. we had the, they they were running the audio art symposium they were running in linz the audio art conference that's how i get you know really connected with the with yeah, this yeah. kind of activity yeah, I know. I, I told Christoph about this and he asked me about you also. <laughs> really yeah. great, great link. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, like, uh, 
we fulfilled the one and a half hour <laughs> time for lecture. <laughs> We we should make a, a shorter break, and uh, if you are ready to help us with the with the post paradise, that would be great to meet you at four o'clock. And I think that that's really great opportunity to be an active uh, participants of the of the of the project and and uh, being on the way to control the project because that that's the, the, this beautiful form of performance. When we are on the remote, we are we are controlling the the, the piece. So that's 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 today. <laughs> Post paradise is waiting for us. We are yes. Start, we are making check uh, sound check, but also the the line check the, the structure uh, at at four o'clock. I think it will last like half an hour, forty minutes, no longer. Perhaps it depends um, what would be the the what what laptops and uh, uh, tablets, mobile phones, because Zoom is available for all those devices. Yeah, and you can easily get into. Perhaps I should put also the again the password and the ID number to the website to be clear, because sometimes. From unclear reason, people can cannot go through. Even that it's open to be connected automatically, but to be to be clear. So we are we are online all the time. So that's also easy. Uh, Conrad is is focusing on Facebook. So whenever something gets wrong, you can try to contact me. You know, on the website of the festival, maybe it's not so clearly visible, but on the bottom right corner is my mobile phone for years, the same. <laughs> so it's very easy to just call me, even when you are in trouble. So that, that's also the, the old patient, but still one of the basic uh, channel just to call. So thank you very much. Uh, let's make a lunch or some coffee break uh, now and uh, we see each other uh, at four o'clock. Thank you, Maya, very much. That was really great to have you here on the on the line. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, bye, Nastia. <laughs> bye, bye. Do zobaczenia, panie Krzysztofie. Cześć, Konrad. Do zobaczenia. Widzimy się za chwilkę. Cześć.